All right, welcome to another ham radio video. I decided to go ahead and purchase the Yaesu FT3D um, System Fusion GPS enabled uh, HT. I was very impressed. I went to Hamcation. I was very impressed with the way the radio was. I really liked the display as my eyes get a little bit older and aging. <clears throat> I had a really nice clear, clear crisp display. I've watched many YouTubers uh, review this um, radio and I was very uh, impressed with what they talked about for battery life and uh, many other features. So this is just a quick unboxing video. I'm planning to do a more detailed review of this radio after I've spent some time using it. But uh, as of right now, I have not opened this. Uh, I haven't done anything with it. I'm waiting. I was waiting to do the video for you guys. And then uh, later down the road, after I've used it for a while, I will come back and do a, a review of the radio, what I like and don't like. And uh, I'll try to use all the different features. So uh, before we do the unboxing, let me just go through some of the features of this radio. Most of you are probably aware of this, but uh, it has System Fusion. Now, I've been using D-Star. It's the only digital mode I have for ham radio at the moment. I don't currently have any DMR-capable radios, but uh, I didn't have uh, Fusion. And with my Open Spot 2, I can cross-platform between Fusion and DMR. So I figured if I got a Fusion radio... And I've been really impressed with my Yaesu uh, HF FT891. And I wanted a really a, a quality HT that I could carry every day with me. Um, I do have my Kenwood uh, THD74, um, which I really like. And uh, it has a just a whole awesome amount of features. But I'll be honest, uh, because of the expense of this radio, this is not a radio that I, I take out with me anywhere. Um, so I wanted a radio that I could more readily take with me. That had a lot of features in case uh, all I had one on me if something happens or whatever is just an HT. So I thought the uh, Yaesu System Fusion uh, FT3D would flip that uh, or, or fill that need for me. So let's go over some of the reasons why I decided to purchase this. And uh, in the next review, I'll go over a lot of these features uh, and and see how I like them if they if they did what they what I thought they would do from the other YouTubers who reviewed this. So. It's System Fusion enabled, and like I said, with my Open Spot 2, my Shark RF Open Spot 2, I can cross platform from Yezu to DMR, and I'll be testing that over the next several weeks, see how that goes. Has a long battery life. A lot of the YouTubers have talked about the, the, the really long battery life. It comes with a 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, and uh, a lot of people have really talked about how good the battery is. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, has GPS and APRS. Um, it has the backtrack feature. So I like the backtrack feature. So uh, I'll be testing that out also with this radio. Hopefully, maybe I'll do a video of the, of, the, of the backtrack feature, what it looks like, how it works, and show you on video. Uh, but sometimes I'll visit my dad up in the mountains and stuff. And uh, I, I, I actually, for years, was looking for a GPS receiver. Um, for going out in the woods or whatever so I could mark my location and that the GPS would help me find it back. Well, this radio supposedly does do that. And you can mark up to three points and it will navigate you back to those three points. Um, so I think that's a pretty neat feature to have with you on you all the times the HT and everyday carry HT, which is why I'm getting this. Is It's an everyday carry HT for me. It's got a clear color display. Um, I saw this at the uh, Orlando Hamcation show um, 2000, uh, well, 2000, yeah, 2020, February 2020. A little interesting story. I went to go look in the Azu booth at this radio, and I was a little surprised that the radio was just sitting there all by itself. It wasn't tethered to anything or whatever, which is nice. I mean, I like to be able to pick it up and check it out and everything. And I was with my mom uh, at the time. Uh, she also has her ham radio license. And I said, oh, I want to go back and look at this Yazu FT3D. And I went back to the booth, and uh, I didn't see it there. So I asked one of the uh, sales representatives with the Yezu that was there, hey, where's the FT3D? And that's when they all realized someone had walked off with it. So I was very disappointed to find out that, unfortunately, even at ham ham radio shows and, and all that stuff, and hamcation, that someone would actually steal a radio like this. I, I just, I don't see why you take that kind of risk to steal something like this. I don't understand why you would want to do that. Um, for me, I mean, this is not outrageously expensive. Um, I did purchase this from HRO, Ham Radio Outlet. They had a really, really good deal uh, for the uh, digital hamvention they were doing. Um, so uh, I picked it up. 
uh, because of the sale. So a big thank you to Ham Radio Outlet. I also did purchase previously my Kenwood THD 74 from uh, Ham Radio Outlet, and uh, they've they've done very well. Comes just as I order it. Everything's everything's good. Haven't had any issues with them. So let's see uh, what else. Uh, wide band reception. Now this has a lot of wide band capabilities in the HT, which I like. Uh, it does not do sideband, so it will not do HF sideband, but it does AM, FM, um, shortwave. Uh, you can do the airbands, uh, you know, all this stuff. It does NOAA. I'd like that it has NOAA weather alert. I do have several other radios that do have NOAA weather alert, but I always like to have that. I live here in Florida. We have a lot of hurricanes and things like this, so it's always good to have that. Um, band scope. I'm really interested in the band scope on this. It would be really nice to have a HT with me that basically has a band scope, a nice quality band scope, so I can see what's going on around me wherever I am. It would be really neat if someday a manufacturer comes out with a waterfall display on it in HT. Uh, the way things are going, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that comes out. Now, as you may or may not know, I'm waiting on the ICOM IC705 to come out. Um, I was a little disappointed, of course, when that was set back because of the whole uh, human malware virus. Um, I won't say the actual name, but you all know what I'm talking about. Um, but this is something that will be my everyday carry HT. Um, the ICOM 705, while I can carry that with me, it's obviously not going to go in your hip so easily. You probably have to, I'll probably have it in a bag or some kind of case to carry it and take it with me. But of course, I'm very excited about all the features of that radio, being able to do HF, uh, QRP the D-Star. I am really, really happy with D-Star. I've been very impressed with D-Star ever since I, I started out with D-Star on my Kenwood THD-74. Um, really, really like D-Star. And of course, with my Icon 9700, uh, I just really, really love D-Star. And uh, here in Florida, a lot of times we have thunderstorms all the time. And uh, I like having uh, to be able to go on D-Star through my hotspot or something where I don't have to have my antennas hooked up. Uh, because of lightning, I can disconnect all my equipment, and I can use the HT with a hotspot, and I can I can either have the hotspot powered up by the house, or I can have it powered up by a backup battery. And as long as I got internet, um, I'll, or I can go through my cell phone too, I can talk on D-Star without having to risk my equipment being connected during a thunderstorm. So I like that. Um, let's see. You can record QSOs, so I can record both the transmit and the receive audio. I really like that. Um, it does take a micro SD card, uh, up to 32 gigabytes. Um, so that'll be a neat feature. It's IPX5, uh, water resistant. Um, I really like this to be waterproof, uh, being here in Florida with hurricanes and severe weather, we have thunderstorms that come in and they can be very, very intense. Um, so to live in Florida, when I first became a ham radio operator, I quickly realized that if I'm buying an HT, I really need to have some kind of weather proofing or weather resistance on it just because you never know you're going to get caught out in a rainstorm uh, suddenly uh, caught off guard and you don't want to lose your equipment because it got wet. It also has the uh, CAM, the Club Channel Active Monitor. I'm excited to check that out and review that in my next upcoming video on the Azu FT3D. Um, Bluetooth. Now I've heard uh, you can use uh, other brand Bluetooth uh, headsets with this. I'm going to test that out. And I also like the idea that I can use a Bluetooth speaker with this. I've heard people say they can connect this to a Bluetooth speaker. So if the audio is a little low on this and I want to boost it up a little bit, I can hook, hook it up to one of my Bluetooth speakers. So I'm going to test that out over the next few weeks and uh, get back to you on that. Um, what else? Able, uh, you're able to label the memories up to 16 characters. So you're able to, to label the names of the repeater or whatever you want to do. So I like that. So that way I can look at it and I can see the label. Uh, clearly. It's WireZX capable um, through my Shark RF open spot too. In other words, I should be able to control uh, what room I go into and all that stuff in System Fusion right through my hotspot with this radio, which I like. Uh, transmit power. Um, so very important. Uh, this goes up to five watts, then two and a half watts, one watt, and 0 0.3 watts. So if you're talking through a hotspot and you want your battery to really last a long time, you want to talk, you don't need a lot of power to talk through your hotspot. So in the Kenwood, <clears throat> I have this on the lower setting of, uh, I think it's, uh, what, point, point zero 0.02 watts or point two zero watts. Uh, and it works very, very well. So I can use this on D-Star 
through my hotspot at very, very low power. Um, so that was a feature I really liked on the Kenwood, and it's nice to have it also in this, this, um, this HT. And again, uh, as I said, this is the first time I'll be using Fusion. I've never used Fusion before. Um, the only one I've experienced with, as I said, was D-Star, so looking forward to that. Um, snapshot it has a picture feature. As of right now, I do not have the, the camera mic that you need to take the picture and send it, but it does have that capability. I did just add that to my ICOM 9700 with the firmware update, where now I can send and receive pictures. So pretty neat there. Um, it's got 1,256 memory channels. Um, that is a lot of memory channels, and that's pretty cool because some some of my radios don't have as much memory uh, as that. So pretty much I I can't imagine ever filling up 1,256 memory channels, but I like that the capability is there should I need it. As I said, always has already has the NOAA weather alert and uh, has a built-in on-off timer. Um, that seems like a pretty neat feature, so if I want to listen to it for a couple hours and then just turn it off, and maybe if I'm dozing off to sleep, and I forget to get up or turn it off, it will just hopefully, if I understand that correctly, it will just turn itself off. So anyway, I can be a little bit long-winded, so let's go ahead and open this up and see what you get in the box. All right, comes this a really nice box. Um, let's see, you got the, I'll show you here. So you open it up, you get the manual right there. Looks like a pretty thick manual too, so. Pretty neat there. Let me get some more light for you guys. I didn't have my other, my light there. Let's see if that helps out a little bit. So anyway, very nice manual. We'll set that aside. Let's see what else here you get. Looks like you get this little charger. Let's go ahead and take it out and see what the, the readings are on it. So AC adapter, part number is SAD-25. Um, let's see, does it say the output? Input, output. Output is one amp. So everything I heard, this is kind of a slow way to charge this. I did get the uh, cradle charger for it because I know it was, it was uh, definitely something you, you probably want, I want because I, I don't want to spend 10 hours charging the battery. This is what I heard in other YouTube uh, reviews. I have yet to charge this or anything. I haven't done anything. Like I said, I haven't taken it out of the box at all. I wanted to do that here on camera with you guys. Let's see what else we get here. You get the antenna, and uh, let's see if we can take that out here. I'm gonna have to open that up for you. See if you guys can see my camera focusing on that. Sorry about the focus, guys. There you go. So it is a male SMA. Okay. Get a cable here. And take this out and see what kind of cable it is. And of course, this is really well packaged. Uh, I'm going to get some scissors to cut that. Okay, so you get a uh, USB cable here. Come on, focus. All right, so get that, we'll set that aside. Sorry about the autofocus, guys. All right, the radio, and it looks like the battery. All right, so let's check out the radio. There you go. Yezu FT3D, and we're gonna go ahead and take this off, doing it live on camera for you guys. Very nice. I'll set that down here, and you get the battery. Very hefty looking battery. So let's check out what the battery says there. So lithium ion pack, as I said, 2200 milliamp hours, 16 watt hours. As I said, I've heard this has fantastic, fantastic battery life. So very, very nice. And I haven't, like I said, I haven't messed with this at all. So let me put this together and there we go. 
And let's compare the form factor next to my uh, Kenwood here. So we'll do a little side by side there. We'll get the box out of the way. So size wise, you can see definitely the profile is a little bit uh, smaller, uh, maybe a little bit wider than the Kenwood. Um, for those that might have a Kenwood THD 74 or just looking at that, let's do a side by side comparison. And I don't have the clip on there. So of course with the clip, it'd be a little bit thicker. Let me get it so the background's there. So there you go. A little bit thinner than the Kenwood. Um, as I said, because of the Kenwood and the, it's, uh, it's cost, it's not something I, I usually take with me. If I travel or something, or I'm going out of town or something, definitely something I would take. If I had to go on a, uh, I don't know, have to suddenly leave the house and I had to grab a radio and I didn't have much time, at this point, uh, I would grab this one just because of its wide band capable receiver. Um, that way on the fly I can operate, and it is a tri-bander, the Ken was a tri-bander. Um, the Azu's uh, only a dual bander, um, you know, two meter, 70 centimeter. Um, and I already knew that. That's fine. Uh, and I don't have the Icom IC705 yet, so if I really had to get out of the house quickly and had to grab a one radio, that's probably going to be the radio in the future that I get. So um, anyway, let's turn this. We'll turn this on just for a moment and just see if there's any battery on it at all. And it says, enter my call sign. So I'm going to take care of all that stuff off video. For you guys and uh this again this was just a quick unboxing and just my thoughts about why i purchased the yazu ft3d so again it's got a really amazing display um, you're going to see a lot of this in the next video i plan to do a more detailed review but this is just mainly just a real quick unboxing for you guys and uh just uh just uh wanted to share that with you guys so i'll be working on a review video of this yazu ft3d and all the features i went through my likes and dislikes, um, and all that stuff. So look forward to that. I'm uh, K4BBC, and uh, you guys have fun, and we'll talk to you again, and you guys take care.